When Associated Press correspondent Don Whitehead and his press colleagues arrived in southern England to cover the Allied invasion of Normandy, Major General Clarence R. Hubner of the American 1st Infantry offered this welcome. We're glad to have you with us. We'll do everything we can to help you get your stories and to take care of you. If you're wounded, we'll put you in the hospital. If you're killed, we'll bury you. So don't worry about anything at all. It was early June of 1944 just before D-Day. The long-anticipated assault would, if successful, drive across France and into Germany, liberating Western Europe from German occupation and ending the Second World War. Launched on June the 6th, at 6.30 a.m., D-Day had been years in the making. The greatest armada ever assembled included more than 4,400 ships and landing craft, 1,500 tanks and 11,000 planes. On D-Day itself, 70,000 soldiers would land across an 80-mile front stretching from Cherbourg to Le Havre at beaches codenamed Utah, Omaha, Gold, Juno and Sword. The American 1st Infantry, known as the Big Red One, would spearhead the attack at Omaha. On invasion morning, AP had reporters, artists and photographers in the air, on the Channel, in London and at English departure ports and airfields. Wes Gallagher, a veteran of the North Africa campaign, directed the hand-picked team from the Portsmouth headquarters of Supreme Allied Commander General Dwight D. Eisenhower. Having heard on German radio that the landings had begun, Gallagher hurried to the British Ministry of Information to await the official communique. It came just before 9am with this brief instruction. Now, gentlemen, you have exactly 33 minutes to prepare your dispatches. At precisely 9.32 a.m., the doors opened and the journalists poured out to release their copy. One minute later, Gallagher's flash appeared on the teletype in New York. London, Eisenhower's headquarters announces Allies land in France. This was followed by a 1,300-word running story that began, Allied troops landed on the Normandy coast of France in tremendous strength by cloudy daylight today, and stormed several miles inland with tanks and infantry in the grand assault which General Dwight D. Eisenhower called a crusade in which we will accept nothing less than full victory. Roger Green followed the British-Canadian front in the sweep through France. At 8.45 a.m. on D-Day, he waded ashore in waist-high water as men on either side of him were killed. From inside a foxhole, Green pounded out the first AP report from the beachhead, leading with the news that Hitler's Atlantic Wall cracked in the first hour under tempestuous Allied assault. The wall may have cracked for the British at sword, but it did not do so at Omaha, the toughest invasion beach of all. Don Whitehead landed there with the 16th Regiment of the 1st Infantry Division. He lost his bedroll and equipment, and nearly his life if the American troops were able to move only 100 yards inland in 12 hours. At age 36, Whitehead was already well known as one of the AP's most effective battlefield reporters. He had survived the landings at Jela, Salerno and Anzio, but on D-Day, he lost all his fear. So many guys were getting killed that I stopped being afraid. I was resigned to being killed too. When we landed behind the assault troops, the enemy was still pouring a heavy machine gun mortar and artillery fire into the boats as they drove ashore and had our troops pinned behind a gravel bank just above the water's edge. Troops, supplies and vehicles began to pile up on the beach at an alarming rate. The enemy controlled the exits with accurate fire. Whitehead would never forget the calmness of Colonel George A. Taylor, who rallied the 16th during the height of battle. Gentlemen, we're being killed on the beach. Let's go inland and be killed. The surge into Normandy had begun, and the fighting ahead would be equally savage. A week after D-Day, the Americans moved to capture the deep water port of Cherbourg. American troops clawed into the city from the south, east and west and clamped a firm grasp on the port, wrote Whitehead on June the 25th. The Germans' stand-or-die defences slowly withered. Cherbourg lies under a pall of dust and smoke. For most of July, fighting raged in the hedgerows and narrow lanes around saint lô a vital defence position for the Germans, in spite of intensive Allied bombing. 
The Americans suffered 40,000 casualties during the advance, but finally, on July 18th, Whitehead entered the shattered town with an American column. When a period of bad weather broke, the first United States Army launched Operation Cobra, a major offensive that signaled the Allied breakout from Normandy. While trying to photograph attacking aircraft, AP photographer Bede Irvin was killed by an aerial barrage of friendly fire. Buried on his 34th birthday at the US military cemetery near Lacombe, Irvin was the first American civilian war correspondent to die covering the battle for France. The success of Cobra offered the Allies an opening to Paris and the Seine. Whitehead was eager to get there. Rather than wait for the official announcement from French authorities, he sped into the city by jeep, arriving just after 9am on August 25th. An hour later, he was able to file his copy from the press wireless truck at Romboyer. It was the only eyewitness account in the American papers that day. American and French columns fought their way into and seized the heart of Paris Friday. They received a thundering welcome from her citizens as they opened battle with Germans and Vichy militiamen still entrenched in important strongholds. But when the last enemy resistance crumbled at the gate to Paris, then this heart of France went mad, wildly, violently mad with happiness. All the emotions suppressed by four years of German domination surged through the people. The streets of the city as we entered were like a combined Mardi Gras, 4th of July celebration, American Legion convention and New Year's Eve in Times Square, all packed into one. In the distance, there was the faint thunder of an occasional gun, but resistance inside the city had ended. <laughs> 